AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids. Six months later, Apple released FDA-approved hearing aid support for the AirPods Pro 2 just about six months ago. And since then, I've been using them for that purpose. In this video, I thought I'd jump in, let you know how that's gone for me and whether or not I'd recommend the AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids after this extended experience. But before we get started, I wanted to say thanks for being here. Thanks for stopping by. This isn't a sponsored video in any way. So subscribe, like, bell notify, any any activity that you do on this video other than clicking away helps me out quite a bit. First off, let's take a second to talk about what this feature is, how it's supposed to work, and who it's for. If you want the full deep dive, including how to set up your AirPods Pro 2 to be hearing aids and that kind of thing, check out the original video that's linked at the end of this video or find the link down in the description. But just to recap, with iOS 18, Apple released a new hearing aid mode. It includes a built-in hearing test. And once you take the test and turn on the hearing aid mode, the AirPods automatically apply your settings when you stick them into your ears in transparency mode. You can still switch back and forth between noise canceling and all that. They also apply a personalized hearing profile when you're listening to music or other media. And that honestly is a feature that's gone you know, sort of under the radar and one that I'd like quite a bit myself. So six months later, what have I learned? Do I still use them or have I switched back to other hearing aid products or, or nothing at all. Let's start with comfort. Not long after I began using these regularly, I picked up a set of third-party foam ear tips from Amazon. They're called Foam Masters, and they look like this. They come in uh, a case with three of them in here, and they are designed specifically for the AirPods. Here are the AirPods with them on for me. I believe that I've got the medium here yes black medium they come in different colors different sizes link to these down in the description if you want to check them out for yourself the stock silicone tips are fine for short-term use but after a few hours i found they they get itchy and a little slippery and that kind of thing at least for me maybe you have a different experience from feedback in my earlier videos about this i know that i'm not alone in not liking the silicone tips for long-term use the foam tips have a few key advantages. One is that you kind of squish them or twist them a little bit to get them down to size. Then you stick them in your ear and then they expand to create a better seal. And I found that that helps me, A, with being able to trust that they're going to stay in and also a little bit more with the comfort. And the better seal means that you get a better quality hearing aid set up with the AirPods just in general. For me, they've made a big difference. As for day-to-day -day use, I found that the AirPods Pro 2 work best for me as sort of spot support. They're not really made for wearing all day, every day with their battery life. I've got mild to moderate hearing loss as well as some tinnitus in my left ear. And when the tinnitus flares up, I find that wearing the AirPods really does help kind of tone it down. I, I don't know what mechanism or function does that. Some people have said that it does for them. Other people have said that it doesn't help their tinnitus at all. In terms of hearing, I found they're, they're great for when you're in a conversation, you're in a loud space, or you're, try, you're watching television or something like that, and it, they just pick up that little bit more sound. You can adjust how much and, and that sort of thing, but I found that when I just plug them in, automatically my hearing kicks up a couple of notches, and it really does help. Since my first video, I've tried also several over-the-counter hearing aids some costing three, four times more than the AirPods Pro. I've tested brands from Sony and Sennheiser, Ella here, and a couple of others. And each one does something well, but not all of the important things well. Here's a big one. Having Bluetooth in my hearing aids has, for me, become a make or break feature. You get your calls, you get your notifications, you listen to your media, all of that stuff happens right away with these in your ears, in addition to kind of having your hearing amplified as well. It can be a little jarring at first, but the alternative is like taking one out and then putting your phone up to your ear and then like to answer a call. I, I don't know. I found that having Bluetooth as well as the hearing aid going is just an added feature that makes it that much easier to use them. 
and the AirPods Pro do that better than any other over-the-counter hearing aid that I've tried. Having that sort of hands-free connectivity is just the way that AirPods have always worked. And the other hearing aids that either don't have Bluetooth or they have it, but it feels kind of half-baked. It doesn't sound as good. It It's just, it's clear that they weren't designed with that as one of the main features. Now, here's a little bonus use that I've discovered. I'm a musician and I've gone to many, many shows, big shows, little shows, shows all over the place, loud shows, lots of loud shows, band practices, all that kind of stuff. And that's definitely a major contributor to my hearing loss. And these days, if I go to any kind of show or concert, I can't do it without hearing protection. Otherwise, my ears suffer. My ear, my left ear particularly starts to feel kind of, it starts to ring, starts to feel kind of congested. It's just really not a pleasant experience. And so, before I started using hearing protection or hearing aids, I just didn't really go to shows. I've worn the AirPods Pro 2 to a few shows now. Just most recently, I went to see the Mavericks and Dwight Yoakam, and it was in an arena, which is always kind of like boomy and just not the best experience. But because the AirPods Pros have built-in compression, like they're always listening for a certain decibel level, and they will lower that as it gets too loud, because they have that feature built in, the compression will sort of jump in and it won't let the sound get louder than the 90 or so decibels that it deems as, you know, harmful. And so it's actually a better experience than when I've tried to use foam earplugs. Foam earplugs, are they filter out certain frequencies, but it always feels like you have foam earplugs in your ears and you're not really hearing everything as well as you could. But the compression of the AirPods Pro lowers the volume enough, but still lets some sound through. And the combination of the ambient sound that's getting through my ears just in general and what's coming through the AirPods has made it really enjoyable for me to go to shows for the first time in a while. For everyday things like watching TV or hearing conversations better, the AirPods Pro work just fine. But there are some downsides, and I would be remiss if I did not talk about them. First of all, the battery life is only two to three hours for the AirPods Max, which is much, much shorter than any of the over-the-counter hearing aids that I've tried. So unless you buy a second pair of AirPods Pro, you'll have times where, you know, the battery starts to run out and you have to take them out and stick them back into the case so they can charge up. And then you're left without anything to help you, which is not convenient. And if you were to go with this as your one and only way to improve your hearing, then I think that having two pairs is still less expensive than most over-the-counter hearing aids. So maybe that's the, the route that you want to go. Second, the AirPods Pro are not invisible unless you have really long hair or something like that. Some people might see you wearing AirPods and think that you're wearing earbuds and they can't approach you to talk to you or you won't be able to hear them. Some might even think that you're being rude by wearing them in a conversational setting. I have had some conversations wearing them where I did get a few strange looks, but all in all, for someone like me with mild to moderate hearing loss and some tinnitus that pops up every once in a while, I prefer using the AirPods over the OTC hearing aids that I've tried. For one thing, they sound really good, and in fact, their profile it seems to be more tailored to my ears than I can get with a lot of those other hearing aids. If my hearing loss were more profound and I needed something that helped me all day, every day, I'd probably look for something else and hopefully be able to find something that, that sort of hits all the same marks as the AirPods Pro. But the AirPods Pro 2 give me everything that I need from a hearing aid standpoint. Plus, I really like them as headphones. They're kind of my first choice as headphones for most everything that I do, and they're a solid hands-free solution for taking phone calls or dictation or whatever it is that you might need to do hands-free while driving or whatever. Most OTC hearing aids for those kinds of things just don't measure up. If you've got questions about the AirPods Pro 2 or any anything else that's hearing aid related, please drop it down in the comments and I'll be happy to give you the answers that I have to give or direct you to some place where you might be able to get the answers and check out my original video about the AirPods Pro 2 as hearing aids to learn how to get it all set up and everything like that. That's going to be linked at the end of this video 
also down in the description. If you got some value from this video, please hit subscribe. Come back and see me again sometime soon. Leave a comment just because you feel like being magnanimous, because any of that really helps me get videos out further to new audiences and, you know, hopefully helping people learn more about the tech that they're using. Clicking the links in the description gives me a small kickback. If you buy something, costs you nothing. And channel memberships are, are cheap as well. They help feed my grandson. Anything you do is appreciated, not least of which watching this video to the end. Thanks so much for being here. Until the next time, I'm out.